Tensions with North Korea are e escalating quickly in ways we have not seen in years. The nuclear-armed Hermit Kingdom is breaking all the rules and raising real concerns that a nuclear test could be coming. It's so serious that South Korea scrambled 30 fighter jets today after a dozen North Korean warplanes and bombers flew near its border. They appeared to be doing air-to-surface firing drills for about an hour, according to a U.S. military official. It's just the latest act of aggression from Kim Jong-un, and this week has been chock full of them. Two days ago, North Korea fired a nuclear-capable ballistic missile over Japan. It flew nearly 3,000 miles, the longest distance ever for a North Korean weapon, far enough that aimed differently, it could wipe out U.S. military bases on Guam. The missile launch forced the Japanese government to send out evacuation alerts. The last time North Korea fired a missile over Japan was 2017. That was after President Trump threatened to unleash fire and fury on the country. Then yesterday, North Korea fired two more ballistic missiles, one of them towards South Korean waters, after the U.S. Navy redeployed its nuclear-powered supercarrier and strike group to the Korean Peninsula. North Korea has now launched 41 ballistic missiles this year, the most ballistic missile launches detected in a single year ever, and it's only early October. Matthew Krennic is with us now. He's the acting director of the Atlantic Council's Scowcroft Center for Strategy and Security. He also served as intelligence defense official in Republican and Democratic administrations. Matthew, is, is this different than the usual temper tantrums we, we, we've seen him throw in the past? What, what's Kim Jong-un after this time? I, I think it's similar to some of the crises we've seen in the past. And I think Kim Jong-un is uh, doing two things here. Uh, one, um, sometimes a test is just a test. Kim Jong-un has laid out ambitious goals for his uh, strategic forces. He wants longer range, more accurate ICBMs, submarine launch ballistic missiles, so-called MIRV missiles with multiple warheads, uh, and he needs to conduct more tests to uh, know that he has those capabilities. But then the second thing here is we've gotten into a little bit of this tit for tat with the United States engaging in shows of force to deter North Korea and assure its allies in Japan and South Korea, uh, and then Kim, uh, Kim Jong-un in North Korea retaliating. Um, so it's a little bit like two guys in a bar um, getting into a fight. It's one thing to make uh, verbal threats, a, a show of force, uh, is something else. And so we're uh, engaging in the show of force here to, to show that, that we're ready to defend ourselves and defend our interests. Right. It shows, certainly, condemnations don't seem to work, and, and North Korea is already heavily sanctioned and fully isolated. What can Washington actually do? Well, the Biden administration has really put this on the back burner, I think, because it is such a hard problem. They focused more on the war in Ukraine, China, uh, negotiations with Iran. They've essentially ignored North Korea. Um, I, I think the, the best strategy, and it's, it's not a very good one, is, is essentially a, a pressure and engagement strategy uh, to make it clear to North Korea that as long as they engage in this provocative behavior, we're going to make life difficult for them, tougher sanctions, um, uh, defensive measures to protect ourselves and our allies. But if they're willing to come to the table and discuss uh, limits on their nuclear missile program, we're willing to talk with them. Uh, I, I don't think there's a great uh, chance that that will work, but I think it's about the, uh, the only option that we really have. Matthew Krennic, thanks very much.